rivalry game between BYU and Utah will take a two-year hiatus after this fall and return in 2016. But beyond that, no future meetings have officially been scheduled, leaving many to wonder about the future of the rivalry. Utah Athletic Director Chris Hill addressed the future of the rivalry by making this announcement through the Utah Athletics YouTube page. It seems that wherever I go during the summer, our fans and the BYU fans are interested in when we're going to play BYU in the future and how it's going to unfold. I can assure you that Tom Holm and I have had many discussions and we're very close to signing a contract. It looks like in 2017 we'll be playing in the early part of September and in an unusual situation in 2018 we'll be playing the last game of the year. This is an opportunity for us to help the league in terms of making sure that nobody has to play 12 games in a row. It's a little complicated, I hope it's not, but that gives us an opportunity to play BYU at the end of the year. I can again assure you that we're putting things together, we'll get a final approval from the league in early August, and then we'll make sure we can make a formal announcement, if not sooner. Again, we value the BYU-Utah rivalry. We know it's important to our student athletes, to our universities, to our fans, and to the media. So go you. Wilson leads it to the end zone. It is caught. Kenneth Scott holds it in. Two guys were there, but Scott goes up to get it. It is caught for a Utah touchdown. Kenneth Scott has his second touchdown grab of his career, the second of the night. Kenneth Scott, the best receiver with respect to going up and, and catching the jump ball. That was Kenneth Scott. Kenneth Scott. Kenneth Scott. Well, he had a breakout season in 2012. Now he hopes to accomplish even bigger and better things in 2013. Utah wide receiver Kenneth Scott joins us in studio. Camp, Kenneth is not too far away. It's crazy how fast it's coming. Are you doing anything to unwind a little bit before the grind begins, or is your grind already underway? Well, the grind is already underway. Uh, we just, right now, just busting our butt in the weight room and in conditioning just to try to, you know, overcompensate for last year and get that out of our heads and just come into the season ready. I know it was disappointing not making a bowl game last year, having a five and seven year. If you see the lines out of Vegas, if you read all the preseason publications, people are down on you guys. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to that? You know, we kind of like it. We kind of like being under the underdog and stuff like that. So, you know, we just take that and put it on our shoulder just to come out and every day and the conditioning and the you know, workouts just to just grind and grind because, you know, this year is a different vibe and we feel like, you know, we can do big things this year and able to, you know, overcome a lot that we didn't overcome last year. You mentioned you see the potential in this team to do big things. What are some of the things that give you an indication that this team could surprise people in the Pac-12 this year? I believe we have a steady quarterback position. You know, the last couple of years, um, our quarterback position, we've been, you know, dealing with injuries. And I think, you know, hopefully, knock on wood, you know, everybody stays healthy, you know, no matter who, who's the starting QB right now, you know, just stay healthy, you know, and just come out prepared. And that's the main thing is just finishing because that's what we didn't do last year. We maybe one game we start, then we didn't finish or we didn't start and we finished and we just got to put it together. You mentioned stability at the quarterback position. I know you trust Travis Wilson. Explain mm -hmm. to everyone watching why they should believe in this guy, that he's the guy that can lead your offense to success. I think, you know, he's learning the offense and is, he's more comfortable. And um, last year, I think he just got put in the fire. I mean, if you get put in the fire, you're going to burn a little bit. Yeah. And so uh, I believe this year, you know, he's settled in. He's The nerves are out. He know what the Pac-12 is about. And um, he's able to just uh, go in and do what he has to do like he did in high school. What impact has Dennis Erickson had since he was added to the coaching staff last spring? Um, I think he um, provided experience. Um, you know, his experience brought it on to us and, you know, and what he expects us to do. And, you know, he's helping BJ along too. And that's just going to help us get along over the hump that we didn't get over last year. You see the trend in college football now is faster, mm -hmm. up-tempo. And that's certainly something that you guys are going to try to do. Mm -hmm. What have you guys done to prepare for that change? You know, in the spring, we didn't huddle at all. It seemed like we just fast paced, fast paced, more conditioning. You know, people, you know, taking accountability to, you know, 
lead themselves and not waiting on someone to leave. They just took a, took initiative and just went out and did it themselves. And that's what you know it's all about. You don't need one leader and a thousand followers. You need everybody to lead themselves. And so you know we've seen a lot of improvement in the spring. Uh, one of the reasons I think people might be down on you guys is if you look at your schedule, mm -hmm. it's tough. Mm -hmm. If you if you, as you look even at the opener, you open up with Utah State, a team that got you guys last year up in Logan. How motivated are you guys to get a little bit of revenge in the opener? Revenge is very sweet, but you know, we're just gonna come out and play our game. You know, that's the main thing we can focus on is just executing, and that's what we didn't do last year. We didn't execute that well, and so this year we're gonna come prepared and execute. No, no, no worry about taking them lightly this year, is there? No, we didn't. Last year, you know, we we didn't come out ready to play, and uh, we didn't. We didn't come out like we were supposed to do, and we got punched in the face first and then reacted when we should just go out and punch them in the face first. And so, you know, they, they came out ready and we didn't, so they, they got it. As you look at the schedule and outside of that Utah State opener, is there one game that stands out to you among the rest of them? No, we noticed that like you have to take every game with the same amount of weight. Um, you can't overlook nobody, whether it's a D1 AA school or a D1 top-notch championship contender. You can't take no one lightly in this league. And um, you know, we're looking forward to every game because we got something to prove this year, especially to the people who doubted us, you know, went away from us and things like that. So we just coming out prepared. I love the chemistry the receiver group has. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had a lot of fun with you guys. You guys have taken the microphone and done some interviews at practice. It's Ken Scott and the fellow AFG members from KSL. Uh, today we're going to introduce our AFG members. Where did that chemistry develop and how did it come to be? Well, I think it's just natural because you know we're all funny guys um, and we just love hanging around with each other and I know that you know if you really want to be a successful team that bond has to be there and yeah. I think that you know with that bond we created with each other it just we just all want to see each other do good and that's the main thing is having a bunch of brothers on the field with you and it's going to make everybody better. You have a great personality, and we get to see a little bit of that on social media. Some players avoid social media, some are afraid of it. You've really seemed to embrace it. What is it about social media and, and, and those type of things that, that, you, that you've, you've really embraced and, and wanted to be a part of? I just like, you know, being the guy that wants to put a smile on his face every day, no matter what circumstance or adversity he is, just being positive, you know, positive living. That's, that's just what I'm about, just not going down with your head down, just embracing life and that's basically what I do out on the football field I have fun you know because anything can happen just because in freshman year my ankle got blown out and that just changed my mindset and so you know I'm just out here having fun bringing other people along so they can have fun too and when you're having fun you know the sky's the limit. For you personally we've talked about the team quite a bit for you personally what are your goals for 2013? Man, just remain consistent, um, being a person that someone can depend on, being accountable to my team, and um, you know, hopefully make a lot of more plays this season. Well, camp's less than a month away, Ken. We can't wait to get in our way. I mean, I Thanks wait. so much for coming in. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate and, it. And uh, boy, it should be a fun season. Oh, definitely. <laughs>
good editing department to bleep out a lot of it. You chicken Get over here! Get over here right now! I'm gonna rip your face off! Well, when I was younger, when he was playing, uh, he'd take me to practice on occasion. You know, Roger Staubach and Bob Lilly and Leroy Jordan, all the old great cowboy players, uh, you know, just being able to have those opportunities was pretty special to me. The life of a football coach, you've got heavy demands on your time. Coaching can consume you if, if you let it. We worked together in 94. It was great. I mean, I enjoyed it, and it was—I wouldn't trade it for anything. A very positive experience for me. One of the funniest stories when uh, Kyle and my dad were throwing a football around. My dad threw the football to Kyle. He missed it. It landed in some dog doo doo, <laughs> and uh, Kyle picked it up and threw it right back to him. He, he caught it and was like looking at his hands. At that point, Kyle just took off. When I think about what I miss the most, it's it's the just hanging out. Every once in a while, I'd say, "Hi, oh, I, I gotta leave you alone. I gotta go home. I just don't know what I'd do. You know, there's probably not any food there. You want to go get some lunch?" I greatly miss him. The direction he gave us in our lives. Oh, I miss everything about him. I wish he was here because if he was here, he'd. I would be on our staff here help, helping me out. You know, he wasn't the guy that told us himself how much he loved us, but we knew. What I would say is I miss you, I love you. And, you know, he was, he was a religious man, so we will see him again. My dad loved us unconditionally, and that's what I want to pass on, you know, to my kids, to, to know that, that they're loved no matter what, whether they play football or don't play football or you know, get into some trouble or, you know, wh whatever, that they always know that, that their parents are there for them. Utah baseball player Trey Nielsen will forego his senior year with the Utes to go pro. He signed with the St. Louis Cardinals on Thursday, the team that selected him in the 30th round of last month's Major League Baseball draft. He's one of five former Utes playing professional baseball. In the round, gets a block from Wilson, and what a block it was!